In my last video, I kind of showed what on the depth finder to look for when you're offshore and you want to catch some snap or where they are throughout the water column and whatnot. So here's an underwater view. This is a series of broken ledges in uh, about 65 feet offshore, um, pretty much straight out of, of Anna Maria. Um, so the GoPro is sitting on the bottom here, and we've done a little chumming. Um, it's going to bounce around a little bit here just because it's not sitting on the bottom completely. And you can see there's a bunch of snapper and grouper kind of sitting on the edge of this, you know, broken up ledge. Um, just some hard bottom all around. And so as we're chumming, dropping bait down, you can see these fish are, are being pretty active. Oh, there's a nice hogfish right there. And on this side of the screen, you can see this scamp grouper. So a bait's coming down. You can see these fish, they start kind of, you know, they're being aggressive. They're kind of swimming up for it and going around for it. And so on your on your recorder, your depth finder, you'll see these fish coming up off the bottom a little bit. This name right right here, they might be like five feet off the bottom. And this is a, a a good time to be dropping jig heads. These fish are you know all around. They're moving around the spot. They're probably looking for pretty much everything that's that's dropping their way. Um, let me go forward a little bit here. And so here's a couple gag grouper. You can see this gag. It obviously sees something dropped, and it's going up to look for it. Most people picture gags, you know, sitting right on the bottom versus being aggressive and then kind of going up. When fish are feeding like this, so you can see here's a gag grouper, right here. When fish are in a in a feeding mood, you got your mangoes, your gags, and everything. They're looking up for stuff coming throughout the water column, um, especially when you're chumming, because that's you know their their food source is coming from above. So here's the gag again. Obviously, it sees something. Something triggers it off. These snapper as well. All the fish kind of congregate about 8 to 10 feet off the bottom here. That is a, a good sign that it's time to be, you know, to, to be jig head fishing. And so when I say jig head fishing, this is kind of what I mean. I, I use um, light spinning rods mainly when I'm snapper fishing. So 4,000 sized inshore reels. Uh, you can, you know, go 3,000 or 5,000. But the lighter the better. This rod has 30 pound braid, and I usually use about 20 pound leader. If the 20 is getting breaking off, broken off, I might go up to 30, but you definitely get more hits on the 20. So as you watch my hand here, I'm kind of feeding the line out as as it's dropping, um, and this lets me know you know where my bait is and and kind of. If I'm getting hit, this line's going to start peeling off the reel. You can see down looking in the boat. There's a ton of ton of fish, snapper, just kind of scattered about. Um, so there's a little bit of chum going out, a couple you know dead white baits and some sh shrimp, just to get a little bit of scent in the water, get those fish kind of looking up. So I'm feeding my line out here. I'm kind of looking around, but I can still feel the line. You can see if you're looking real close, watch the line start coming off the spool really fast. It, you can see it kind of kind of starts going out quick. That's when you know you've got a bite because that fish is coming up to eat and then it's going pretty much straight back down. And usually that's a, a very telltale sign of a you know snapper or grouper. And so up comes another mangrove snapper. Um, that was a, about an eighth ounce jig head. I think we we're in about 45 to 50 feet of water here. And when the bite's good, I typically just kind of leave my fish scattered about the boat. Um, if there's a little bit of shade, I'll, I'll leave them there and I'll gather them all at once because sometimes the bite's only, you know, 10, 15 minutes. You don't have long and, and you got to get these fish while it's good. So I, I kind of just make a pile of of fish all around the boat. Um, so there's another mango to go with, you know, this, this pile that I had been catching that day. And so here's another example of me. I'm just kind of letting that line out while the rod's in the rod holder. I can feel it. Line starts going. I'm like, oh, I got a bite. So I stop, missed a fish. And so I put my hand back on it. Obviously, there's something in there, but I was kind of watching. Oh, and there you can see the line peels, and then I'm on. So if you watch closely, watch the, the line coming off the reel here. Right there, it just starts peeling for a split second, and that's when you know you've got a bite. That's why you've got to almost be feeling that line out. That's why I, I when I'm doing the snapper thing, I'm, I'm basically feeding that line out by hand. And then when it starts peeling, I know I'm on. So big mango snapper. This was in about 130 feet of water. I was using an eighth ounce jig. 
Uh, it takes a little bit of patience, but if those fish are coming up in the water column, you're going to get some nice snapper. And to show you what the bottom looked like on this spot, it's an old possibly shipping container, just some type of real small wreck. So right tight to the bottom, we had, I didn't quite get my GoPro on it. But you can see a lot of these, you know, bee liners, um, vermilion snapper, and mixed in them is a few mangrove snapper. If you were to drop all the way to the bottom, the odds of hooking one of these mangrove snapper is, is pretty slim. So that's why you want to be fishing up above where the mangrove snapper are, are tend, you know, they're going to be feeding a little more to get away from some of these vermilion snapper, which will stay, you know, pretty tight to the bottom. Um, a lot of Almaco jacks and stuff in here as well, which you're going to find over a lot of wrecks. But the, the mangroves and the yellowtails were, you know, halfway to three quarters of the way down versus the bee liners, which were sitting right on the bottom. So anything we dropped, shrimp, squid, white bait to the bottom was, you know, getting kind of pecked off or we get something small before the mangroves and the yellowtails could, could find our baits. So there's that nice mango that I got on the uh, light jig head. 4,000 size reel. But pretty pretty nice fish. You can see our kind of chum that we're, we're throwing out right there. So here you can see bites hot, caught a mangrove. I'm trying to get back out there as soon as possible. Ty over there's got another mangrove. He had matched the same size jig head. So all I'm doing is kind of just tail hooking the whole shrimp with a light jig head, light hog ball, uh, about an eighth ounce circle hook. And going down again. And it was one after the other. So here's another example of me kind of feeling the line out. This one's a little steadier shot. So I'm I'm really feeling the line out. This is in about 50 feet as well. And bite and fish on. And you see another nice mango. Let's kind of swing them in the boat and get back to fishing after that. The mango fishing in the winter is in the fall and winter is probably you know really good in that in that near shore stuff. Um, those fish kind of move in from offshore or or they you know maybe they're moving out of the bay. I know the bay has been really good this year with a lot of jig heads. Um, and so same thing. I'm I'm just kind of using light jig heads and stuff in the cooler. Some nice mangoes in there. And he's got a big mango on it. I think he was using a 3 8 hog ball. Uh, he tends to use a little heavier than I do. But what he'll do is he'll get it down to the bottom, then kind of crank it up fast and, and feel the bite from there versus me letting it out and feeling the line the whole way. He'll kind of get to a little deeper quicker and then slowly do it from there. I, I like to get the hit while I'm dropping. Um, both very effective. We pretty much were out of shrimp at this point, so we were just using dead bait and um, matching the chum. And you see he's back to fishing in, in pretty much no time. And there's another big mango for Jay on the 3 8 hog ball. Um, that's a real big mango, especially for this was in 60 feet. Um, they were chewing pretty good on the on the jig heads then. Look at how big that thing is. Oof. That's a that's a that's a prize for you know near shore legend uh, ledge fishing in the, in the fall and winters and big mangoes along with you know your hogfish see that hog ball <laughs> i was on a dead uh Call them slippery dicks for for bait. Uh, when the fall winter comes, sometimes getting live baits tough. So, and here's Steph with the fish. She was using a little heavier hog ball at this point, so she was getting down a little further. But then she was stopping it, um, you know, three quarters of the way, almost all the way to the bottom to avoid some of those vermilions and and other snapper that weren't what we were looking for. So she's cranking up a fish at that point. And it was a, a nice mango. So versus going straight to the bottom, she's using a jig head there. You can see um, that hog wall. Stopping a little short. 
and nice mango. When you have uh, when you have the jig there, you can feel the bites much better than say you know firing down heavy weights straight to the bottom. And that's one of the things that people tend to do quite a lot of that I disagree with is they'll use a lot of heavy weights and, and you know, fish finder rigs and they just kind of bypass the snapper. Uh, you you want to lighten it up to get more of those fish that are midway through the water column. Use lighter leader, lighter hooks, lighter jig heads. Overkills is not the way to, to get snapper. Nice double header right there. These fish were, you know, really fired up on another day. Um, fall, winter is, is definitely the the best for near shore mango fishing. You can see our bag of chum there. He's throwing stuff out. He got a bag of chum there. We had some live bait. A little bit of everything uh, that day. So I was spitting up a bunch of this, a bunch of the chum that we were throwing out. So what I tend to do is, you know, I fish real light leader, light line, and, and you can always go up and tackle if you're getting broken off by big gags or whatnot. But if you want to get the bite going, you really need to use lighter tackle. Um, if I'm fishing out to, you know, 60 feet, I'll try to use about a 16th or an 8th ounce jig head. If the current's moving a little faster, maybe 3 eighths. If I'm out to 100 feet, I might use, you know, something a little heavier up to about a half ounce. Um, but I've used half ounce all the way out to about 200 feet of water for yellowtails. Um, I know a lot of people aren't getting out that far and they're not going to be fishing yellowtails and mangoes when they're doing that. And you really need a light current, but it, it can be done. So start with lighter you know, jig heads, especially if you're looking for mangoes and yellowtails. Um, I've got packages available on my website, captainchappy.com, for the, you know, the depths that you're looking to target fish in. Uh, you can you can find those. And it, what, it, what they do is it gives you a variety of jig heads. Some have smaller hooks, bigger hooks, to kind of match the bait that you're looking to drop. Uh, there's hog balls with circle hooks that I, that I make as well for, for people that like circle hook fishing in the Gulf and the Atlantic. So there's there's a bunch of options that I give people. I started making my own jig heads just because I didn't really like some of the stuff that I was getting from stores, and I didn't like breaking off, you know, three dollar <laughs> three dollar jig heads a pop. And so I'd made something a little more affordable for myself and other people. And I also give the option of color. I know a lot of people ask me about color. Mangrove snapper tend to, uh, for whatever reason, be attracted to the chartreuse colors. Um, so I, I use a lot of chartreuse and pink. Uh, just kind of when I'm starting. If the water's a little dirtier or low light situation, I might go to a darker color like a, a purple or, or watermelon and even just straight lead. Um, fish don't tend to shy away from it. The, another thing to do is try to hide your your bait with the jig you know, inside it. If you have a standard jig head, you can kind of rip your shrimp in half and thread it through so the hook's coming out one end or the other and and the jig head's kind of on the, the end of it. Um, if you're using some dead bait, you know, maybe thread it, go through the bait once, and then back out the other side so the hook stays a little hidden, um, but it still gives it kind of a natural fluttering fall type motion. Um, the, the big thing is, is just to remember, like, if, if you start getting fish on a certain weight and color, mimic that and keep doing that as long as you can that the fish are biting. If the current picks up a little bit, you might need to go to a little heavier jig head. But if they're, you know, feeding, you get it while it's good because it doesn't last forever. You, you know, you get those 10, 20, 30 minute flurries of, of snapper fishing and, and that's when you got to kind of fill the box. Um, so hopefully I, I've given some good information and, um, you know, people can get out there and, and learn to, to get some mangrove snapper. The mangrove snapper fishing has been phenomenal these past few years. And the gag grouper, for me at least, has been a little slower than normal. But the snapper and the hogfish have definitely taken their place. And that that's not a bad problem to have. I, I, I like, you know, snapper fishing um, and eating a little better than I do gag at, at this point. Gag grouper is just kind of brute. And <laughs> looking to just fill the boxes, uh, especially in the winter when they're coming in shallow. 
Um, so if you like this, enjoyed it, you know, feel free to subscribe. I'll, I'll try to pump out as much of this content as I can to, to let people know what to look for and, and help them out and catch and fish and, and be sure to check out my website, you know, pick up a jig package or two and find what works for you and keep doing it over and over. Thanks.